Myla and Jack have been married for 10 years. They recently celebrated her 38th birthday, had dinner at a restaurant, and spent the evening reminiscing about shared memories and their younger years. They first met at the age of 16, spending time in the same social circle. Later, life divorced them to different cities, but fate brought them back together, and their connection blossomed over time. Their romantic relationship did not start immediately. Myla was indecisive and agreed to date Jack only a year after their first meeting. Before that, they communicated through social networks. At first, Myla was not particularly fond of Jack, but over time her feelings changed and she warmed up to him. After two years of marriage, they had a son. Jack felt completely satisfied with his married life. A beautiful wife and a son, what more could one want? Jack also had a younger brother, Connor. The brothers were very close, but when Connor's wife left him, he began to visit Jack frequently, often staying up late to confide in his brother. You're such a wonderful brother, Connor once remarked. Who else has such a strong bond between brothers? On many occasions, they sat together in Jack's kitchen until well into the night. Jack was sympathetic to his younger brother's situation and often invited him to visit. Sometimes Mila would join them as well. As for their careers, Jack worked as an accountant for a large firm, having recently joined the firm and still feeling out of place. Mila, on the other hand, had been working for the same company as an engineer for almost eight years. The work was challenging, but Mila found satisfaction in it. However, Jack began to notice changes in his wife's behavior. Mila began to refuse to be intimate with him, citing fatigue or poor health. She began to take longer to get ready for work, carefully apply makeup, and come home later than usual. She justified her delays by saying that she was working on a new project that had organizational difficulties. Later on, Mila started even more applying more colorful makeup, spending more time choosing outfits and buying a lot of beautiful lingerie. If before she wore her lace sets only during intimate moments with Jack, now she wore them almost all the time. Jack wondered why. After all, no one would see the lingerie under her clothes, or maybe someone did. The thought kept him on his toes, making him more and more uneasy. He began obsessively searching for ways to monitor Mela's online activities and track her movements. One day, he came across a website describing various tracking devices. Jack was particularly intrigued by an inconspicuous beacon that could be tracked through a mobile app. He made the decision to purchase the beacon, which was delivered by courier. Jack immediately went to his office to study the instructions. In the evening, when Mila was asleep, he discreetly placed the beacon in the lining of her bag. For a week, he followed her movements, checking the app frequently to make sure she was where she claimed to be. For the first four days, everything seemed normal. The beacon showed Mila's normal routine, home, work, and the occasional trip to the store. On Friday, however, things took an unexpected turn. In the morning, Mela said goodbye to Jack, kissed their son, and wished him a good day at school. After dropping the child off, Jack immediately checked the tracking app. To his surprise, Mila wasn't at work, she was at the mall. Rather than act impulsively, Jack decided to wait and see what would happen next. The wife then went to a cafe, presumably for lunch and afterward, as the surveillance showed, went to their house and stopped there. Jack, feeling alarmed, immediately left work and hurried home. As he approached their house, he noticed his brother's car parked outside the house. A wave of terror swept over him. Jack suspected that Mila might be having an affair with a coworker, but he couldn't even imagine such a scenario. Unfortunately, the elevator in their building didn't work, so he had to run up seven flights of stairs, taking two steps at a time, desperate to find out the truth. Reaching the door to their apartment, Jack stopped to catch his breath, his heart pounding in his chest. Coming to his senses, he cautiously opened the door and stepped inside. The first thing he noticed were Connor's boots and jacket on the coat rack, his jaw clenched with anger. From the bathroom came the sound of running water and muffled voices. Quietly, Jack tiptoed to the bathroom door and pressed his ear against it. 
He heard two voices, Mila's and Connor's. Although Jack desperately wanted to believe that nothing illegal was going on, his hopes were dashed when he heard a slap, followed by Mila's quiet moans. Suddenly, Jack had the idea to record the scene as evidence. He quickly activated the camera on his phone and stormed into the bathroom. A naked Mila appeared before his eyes, pressed up against her brother Connor. Both were wet and flushed from the shower. Put the phone away, exclaimed Mila, hurriedly trying to cover herself with a towel. In a fit of rage, Jack bellowed in a low voice, Get out, both of you. Connor, still naked, began to hurriedly dress. But Jack pounced on him, clenching his fists. They had clashed constantly as kids, but their fights had stopped during their school years, and they hadn't fought again since. Mila intervened, grabbing Jack by the shoulders and begging him to stop, tears streaming down her face. The scuffle lasted only a few minutes, but it seemed like an eternity to Jack. He only threw two punches at his brother, but they were driven by his intense anger and resentment. Trying to regain his composure, Jack sat on the bed, burying his face in his hands. Get out, both of you now, he shouted again. Connor hurriedly withdrew, and Mila, still sobbing, tried to apologize to her husband, begging him to forgive her, insisting it was a mistake. But Jack was relentless. He escorted her out of the apartment, wearing only the robe she had hastily thrown on in the bathroom. As a final act of anger and retaliation, he threatened to send out an incriminating video to all her friends. He watched from the window as Mila got into Connor's car, feeling as if he'd gotten a slap in the face for betraying her husband. Later, Jack packed Mila's things, and not knowing where she now lived, left everything on Connor's doorstep. He left his suitcase outside his brother's apartment to avoid a confrontation. However, as he was leaving the building, he suddenly came face to face with Connor. His brother tried to speak, trying to stop Jack and explain everything, but Jack didn't listen to him. He heard Connor shouting after him, begging for a chance to explain. But without looking back, Jack got into his car and drove away. Jack hoped his parents would be supportive and not pressure him to forgive Connor. After all, it was clear to him that his brother didn't deserve forgiveness. When Jack's mother learned of the situation, she was shocked and heartbroken. She had not expected such behavior from her youngest son. Jack filed for divorce from Mila, who continued to call him and even showed up at his workplace begging him to forgive her. They say that infidelity can be forgiven, but not forgotten. Jack agreed with this opinion. Six months later, Jack found out from his mother that Connor and Mila were married in a registry office. What a twisted family history, Jack thought bitterly. He decided not to send the video he had recorded to anyone. He didn't want to hurt Mila's feelings, and he didn't care about the opinion of others. However, he didn't want his son to think badly of his mother, and he was afraid that someone might ridicule the boy because of his mother's shameful act. Jack sincerely hoped that this unpleasant situation would not prevent him from pursuing a new relationship in the future. Although he wasn't sure who he could trust completely, he now knew exactly who he couldn't trust.